So super bummed about today. It was splurring earlier today in Helsinki, and there's been no snow this year, and it super bummed me out. But you know what gets me going? It's new gear. The problem with new gear is you gotta sell your old gear. So today we're going over everything that you need to know to start selling your gear online to make the most money and getting everything done as efficiently as possible. I've sold thousands of dollars worth of gear on Facebook Marketplace and stuff like that, getting rid of my stuff to buy gear and also selling gear. Another video linked over there at the end. You can check that out later. Let's get into it. Welcome back, my name is Daniel, and I have been selling a lot of gear lately on Facebook Marketplace, eBay, all this different stuff. Getting and upgrading from cheap camera, medium camera, expensive camera. And here's all the things that you need to know to be selling your gear properly, safely, and efficiently to get the most money, or get money as fast as you can, which can be a great bonus for some people who don't want to do the hassle of three months waiting to sell their camera so they can buy a new camera. So I'm not actually gonna start with the places that you can sell it because I wanna go over some of the more important things. Most people know Craigslist, Facebook, Marketplace, blah, blah, blah. But there's some more that we're gonna to get to later on in the video, but I wanna start with how to sell it. Most of these places will have a description, a picture, a method, and how you're gonna end up meeting or sending this item to people. And we're gonna focus on that first. You need to have a photo of your camera or your gear that you're selling that looks really, really good, especially for camera gear, because everybody that's looking at this gear is already a photographer or trying to be a photographer and they're gonna want a good picture on their gear that they're looking at. And that's also going to bring people in to click on your image because there's so many on, especially Facebook Marketplace, that are just absolutely god awful pictures. And you are going to want to have the best and more often than not, the brightest picture that you can there. Make sure that your item is in the center of that picture as much as possible because it will crop in. If you're taking photos of your stuff with a DSLR, I recommend using a higher f-stop so more of your actual product is in focus. But before even you get to taking the original photo, I kind of got ahead of myself. When you actually purchase your items, make sure that you keep receipts and the box because people love seeing that in the description which leads us to how you should write your description people are always excited when you can give them the camera inside the box with the receipts and all the little manuals and everything that came with it out of the box you can end up selling it for maybe 10 percent more on them so next up is the description make sure you're writing a detailed description outlining what is wrong with the camera what is good with the camera what condition it is kind of downrate it one so that people are more willing to accept how it looks when you give it to them and when you have receipts and stuff like that, especially I when I purchased things and it's been a receipt and the receipt's only for three, four months ago, which I've done four times, four times in the past six months on rather expensive gear as well. And I've, I haven't even questioned the quality of it just because the receipt was there and I knew it was so brand spanking new. So inside that description, you are going to want to say what it is, a detailed, exactly what version of it. So if it is the 6D, you wanna tell them if this is 6D Mark II or the original one, and go down in there and be as descriptive as possible. Tell them everything that's going to be coming with it, how many batteries, does it have the charger, does it come with a strap, does it have the box? Throw all of that in there. And then if you wanna go above and beyond, putting in there, the specs and things that it's good about so that people aren't asking you those dumb questions even though they could be asking them on to Google, which they don't and they won't and you'll get so many stupid questions. That's one of the most annoying parts, but that will mitigate a few of those questions. When you're in there, you're also going to want to explain that you're only gonna take cash or like here in Finland, there is a banking app that you can just send money to somebody's bank account through their phone number. And that is another good way. So 
explain how you're going to accept your payment, where you're going to accept it. And for me using Facebook Marketplace, I like to tell them the generic area of the city that I am in because that will be a make or break question that will already be answered for serious buyers. Make sure that the item is clean and that when you are selling it to them, everything is wiped off the memory card and make sure that you're either to remove your memory card if you're selling it to someone and it's not included and to take anything off or with you that is not going with that. So make sure only that stuff is there. As well, you are going to want to have the shutter speed. Even if you don't post, not your shutter speed, as well, you're gonna to wanna to have your shutter count. Even if you don't post on your description what the shutter count is, any savvy buyer will understand that that's something that they need to ask and it always helps to have it prior. You can use and download because it's not internal to the camera, well, it's in there, but you're going to have to use your cable and pull it off from the computer. There's a link down in the description to a free software that will allow you to do that. And after you've done all these things, actually probably before even doing some of these things, you should figure out what the value market is of your item specific to the area. For me, I am in Helsinki, Finland, and it is significantly more saturated with camera gear than someplace up north, so the price is going to be a little bit lower to sell a product faster. As well, looking at US prices, which is the largest market, is going to be different than my prices that I'm going to be able to charge people because of different currency, different availability, and different Eh, slightly different products. You're going to want to look around on your site, just type in whatever it is exactly generic and figure out exactly how much these items are selling for. Sometimes it's not a great idea to look for the market value on Facebook Marketplace because a lot of the time people will sell it for less and not even, obviously it doesn't have to be posted, but if you go into places like eBay or Amazon where the prices are listed for refurbished items or even the selling, um, oh my goodness, the auctioned items, what they actually sold for, that will give you a wonderful idea of exactly how much your item is worth. Now we're gonna just do really breeze over this because there's already so many videos out there talking about places to sell, but generic list is going to be Facebook, Marketplace, eBay, Amazon, but those two are gonna take a cut from you, but they are clean cut. Craigslist, you're gonna have to watch out for scammers because that's how that platform works, but if you only take cash, don't ever accept checks take cash and do it in person in a safe place, it is perfectly fine. Here in Finland, there's this thing called Toripistafi, and that is a website here for Finland to sell and buy things, as well as Facebook groups are another wonderful ecosystem to end up selling and trading gear. And then there is the camera shops, which are gonna give you a very low cut for what your uh, actual value of your item is, and then, but they're gonna do it instantly, and then there is pawn shops, which are even gonna give you less. And then there are two sites here, the uh, MPB and KEH, which are gonna give you a estimated value, you're gonna ship it off to them, and then they're gonna send you back a uh, check for that straight to your bank account or however they do that. So those are your options as far as balancing what you want as far as speed, money, getting the most value, and having the most stress with it. Be mindful when you are selling your own items over things like Craigslist, Facebook Marketplace, Amazon, or even eBay, it does take time. I would give it about three months if you are trying to get the most out of your value, but if you're willing to discount it to get the money faster, you will still end up with more than what the shops and the pawn shops will give you, then you can go ahead and discount it up to maybe 15 to 20, maybe sometimes even 25% so that you can sell your item faster and you'll make a little bit more money, but it will, um, you know, obviously you're losing that money that you could have if you would have just waited longer. Sometimes when you enter, there's a ton of other people selling that item and it's going to decrease the value of your item's listing. So just give it some time and eventually somebody will contact you. And now that somebody's messaged you, once you get somebody who seriously messages you because you will end up with a bunch of random messages about dumb little things that could have been Googled or where you live and how they want to meet and all sorts of dumb stuff and people will just shoot these off like they're candy. And you gotta, you have to deal with that. So that's part of the problem and it does take some time to get used to and Try not to get as annoyed at some of these individuals that you're going to go see later because yes. And so once you've met somebody and you're exchanging the gear, make sure that you take everything with you that you need, make sure that you do in a safe place, make sure that you don't accept checks and make sure that there's a secure way of payment 
instantly to your either account through that app, like I said here in Finland they have, or cash. Cash is always the best way to go. Be as honest and straightforward as you possibly can be when dealing with other people, it's the best route to go. And when I am dealing with people, I tell them either when I'm buying or when I am selling it to them, I usually try to get in there that, hey, give me a call if there's something wrong with this product in the next week and we'll sort it out. Then it's kind of saying, hey, after that first week, if you haven't found a problem with it, anything that comes up is on you, not on me. And that's usually the best way to mitigate problems because I don't want to screw somebody in the long run, but then I also don't want to be responsible for something a week, uh, you know, after a week, I just want it to be done and over with. I don't want them coming to me in three months and being like, it's messed up, what is this? And big, you know, I don't wanna deal with that. So I always have that precursor. So now that you've done that, there's wonderful things out there for you to spend your money on, like more lenses and more gear. On this channel, we go over everything mirrorless Canon cameras. I hope this video helped you out. What gear have, are you trying to sell? What gear have you found and where have you found are the best places to sell? Throw them down in the comments sections. Maybe that'll help somebody out. My name is Daniel. Thank you so much for watching. Here's another video that also has how to um, buy gear at a discount on all of these. You can check that out. My name is Daniel. Thank you so much for watching. Take care. Pray for snow in Finland. Thank you.